this is old cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be giving our review on the movie Rampart, which is part of the Los Angeles Times Envelope series. And is not scheduled for release for a few more weeks. I think weeks. it's not until December 16th. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, what was it? 30, they're counting the time off. It's, it's like oh, 30 some day, 30 days. You know, they got a clock, this thing. But um, Rampart is an unusual movie because there's no press material about it. <laughs> And also, when you hear the name, if you're from L.A., you're thinking about Ramparts as in the scandal here in L.A. for the L.A. P PD, um, or the Los Angeles Police Department. But it's not about that. No, it's just, uh, okay, like the, okay, uh, basically the, the um, director, Owen Moverman, said he, he met with former chief of police, uh, Parks, and they had a three-hour discussion about the, you know, what, what caused this, what went on. And he said it was a really nice throughout discussion. It had nothing to do with the movie. Mm -hmm. It's got to do mm -hmm. with uh, with um, a dinosaur on the police department. And why we call him? Why I call him a dinosaur is because most of the people that watch these things know my father was a motorcycle police officer. My father was stationed out of Hollywood, um, at Hollywood. Uh, the foothills and ended up over at Rampart, and my father. So you had first hand all, first well, hand or second hand because your dad. Well, yeah, but I, I, I got, I was in a, was it forty six years ago in the room, when the other officers decided to resign in mass. This see, Rampart has had this problem. The whole police department for since the nineteen thirties, mm -hmm. my father first joined, where they got, we're going to try to put it this way, like one of my father's his partner for twenty years said. There is no such thing as good police officers and bad police officers. They're just police officers and those who get caught. Mm -hmm. So, but the, um, what happened was they were doing the discussion, which I thought was the thing, because here, here's what they're talking about at the Q&A, that, um, that basically, um, you know, for, you know, basically, the times were changing, the laws were changing, and we couldn't change. That's why they all left the department when they did. There's big, you know, all the men. And were, your dad was a part of that too. Yeah, he was a part of the group. They just simply left because they knew, you know, we're dinosaurs. Here they called they called Woody Harrelson a misanthrope, mm -hmm. but he was a dinosaur. He was a smart ass. He wasn't a okay. No matter what, they basically called his thing wrong. If you watch the movie, he said it's all about his racist tendencies. No, it wasn't. No. no, Woody Harrelson put it flat out. He said, I hate everybody. He said, I'm not a racist. He said, I actually date a lot of your girls. You know? <laughs> I date a lot of your girls. Yeah, and I have a good time with them. And he said, and I have, you know, I, I, you know, I have friends that are, you know, I have friends that are gay, I have friends and that. But the trick is, he said, I hate everybody equally. And that was it. He, uh, this is a guy that never ate, he only drank. And he criticized people for not eating all their food. But he never ate. Never did. But, um, um, but it basically... Um, um, we also had a Q&A that followed the movie. Yeah. And the Q&A was with Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Um, uh, Brie Larson. I think Ben Foster was a producer of this movie. Yeah. And um, Owen Moverman. Mm -hmm. So uh, it basically... It was a good Q&A. It was the longest one we've had yet. Yeah, it was like 37 cool. minutes long because... I mean, I recognize the guy doing the questioning. He's a former actor, so he's asking actor questions. But the problem comes is too is like um, uh, we're talking. Okay, these. Okay, this is essentially the same cast, production, everything from the movie The Messenger, which uh, Woody Harrelson was in last year, was basically got him really pumped up about Academy Awards then too, because he was playing a misanthrope military officer, basically, he got to bring the message to somebody died, which is never a good thing. I hate that. I've seen that. Oh, before. that's that's never fun. I, know, I, I do know that, you know, guy come up to a family that I know of and told them their son had been killed in Vietnam and they were not happy about it, especially since their son was sitting in the hospital. Oh. Yeah, there was a miscommunication. So ah. You don't want to be that. But, um, yeah. What did you think about the portrayal of the Rampart Division? Um, Okay, uh, at, that was okay. The 90s, that this was set in 1999 when what happened was one officer to save his rear end basically buried the entire department. He oh, remember it, the Rodney King case? The you know, Rodney King case was before. It's just the ramparts and foothills always had this problem. I mean, it, they're not, it's not that they're bad. Okay, here the trick is. My father said the, the Los Angeles Police Department started going bad when they started hiring military personnel to be police officers. 
And your father could say that why? Because my father was an my father was in, from my father was a major in um, in Patton's Ninth Armored. He was headquarters, headquarters, headquarters. I mean, his tanks were led everywhere. So my father had firsthand knowledge. You, and I mean, most of the people, all the motorcycle guys were all uh, military personnel. All of them, every single one of them. So why was it bad because they were in the military? Because they all had, a, like I said, they all had a, a, a Napoleonic complex. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, there are, as my father said, they were little stormtroopers. The only difference between us and them was we're not wearing black suits. You know, but we had the same, they look at him. Uh, a motorcycle officer looks like a stormtrooper with his leather boots and his uniform and all that. Now they do wear black suits, and they didn't. And, um, and um, but he felt it was a mistake to hire a police. My father was um, a reserve officer while he was in college, learning to be an automotive engineer. So when he became a reserve officer in the military, he was already, he'd been a police officer for three years. So he wasn't the backward case where they came back after World War II and had nothing better to do and they wanted to carry guns and shoot things. So they went, they went to the police department and that's when things, okay, the 30s were bad, the 50s were horrible, the 60s were a disaster, and the 90s is all hell broke out. So. Well, and with their background you can understand, but also yeah. that area of town is mm. not... Oh God, it's, um, I can walk around there. I have no problem walking around Rampart. I had no problem when I was a kid because um, I did have my mom. I can tell you that my mother would really get mad. Did you take your sisters over to Rampart? Yeah. And they said, um, you know you're not supposed to take your sisters, which, but what am I going to do with them? You know, I'm, I'm a teenager and they're like seven years old. And they said, I told you not to take my mom, but I have to go get dad. He's got to drive us home. I said, but I told you not to take you over where those people are. Those people are nice people. We have a good time over there with them. They didn't bother kids. They didn't yeah, bother yeah. old people. They didn't bother kids. They still don't bother kids. They don't bother old people. You have drive-by shootings, but they don't target old people and kids. They target people that have money. They, and they had it in their mindset that they were cleaning up the streets. Yeah, that was it because um, uh, it was. It was just, um, you know, and, and, and as, as long as no one got caught, the problem comes is that, uh, like there's a there's a setup in this movie that Woody Harrelson refuses. He's a dinosaur, a misanthropic policy. He refuses to resign. So, and, and why did he refuse to resign? Because he was doing his job. And as he told them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love that. He said, go ahead, uh, fire me. Yeah. Or what was it, arrest me, and this is what I'll do. Oh yeah, I'll get off. Go ahead and charge me, and I'll get off to a liberal jury. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and then he said they'll they'll reverse the conviction, and then order me to put back be put back on the police department at full pay plus remuneration. So uh -huh. yeah, and that's that's how it works because you do. Oh, it's like I said, it's why my father. Police departments like Los Angeles don't fire people, they transfer them. One of the things that was unusual was, that I thought was really kind of odd was you see him counting up the money to pay for the attorney. Yeah. Uh, no, because he's already done a crime. He said, I still have some money left from such and such job. Mm -hmm. Basically, okay, what would happen was Woody Harrelson would basically break up a crime and then take the money. Because criminals are the one people that can't go to the police department. But unfortunately, the criminals, um, what he does is the uh, Los Angeles Police Department, I guess Gordon Parks or whatever, mm -hmm. they wanted these things buried so much that they, they're, okay, you got to get a part of it, like I said, just the, uh, most of the people say the first 10, 15 minutes are a total waste, it shouldn't even be a movie. The rest of the movie is explaining you should have been long gone if somebody's protecting you. Well, they're not protecting him. They're trying to get his ass out of the police department. They give him every opportunity they can. The whole movie is just one opportunity after another to resign. And then they set him up. Then they set him up. And just, you know, they happen to have a camera, which they didn't have portable cameras in 1999 like we do today, which means it's a full-scale camera rig, a video camera, and set him up doing something, they knew that he would lose his temper, so they they pushed every button. They, they, uh, they, because in the scene, right, where they push this button, you catch it, 
and I don't know if you remember this, if you ever see the news and you see a police officer sitting there beating the guy, yeah. okay, but what it doesn't tell you is the whole story because the camera's not rolling the entire time. And then it cut it to But edit. we see the scene. Yeah. And the scene is, well, the, scene, the guy runs into Woody Harrelson. Yeah, and he gets, it is, Woody Harrelson goes to help him, not to arrest him, he goes to see if he's hurt, he just, you know, what the hell. You know, because he's mad because he, he, he that that car, he's got to fill out all the forms and stuff, and it just, you know, gets you. And then the guy hits him with the door, getting out. Then the guy knocks him to the ground. Then the guy refuses to stop. Then he fights, you know, he fights uh, uh, being arrested, you know. So what you had there was you had assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill with one crime. The door slamming into him is assault on a police officer, a second crime. Knocking him down is a third crime. Leaving the scene of an accident is a fourth crime. Leaving the scene of a crime is a fifth crime. Refusing to stop when the officer tells you to stop is a sixth crime. Um, refusing to submit to the arrest is a seventh crime. And fighting with the officer is an eighth crime. There were eight, there were eight felonies created. But what they showed was, of course, Woody Harrelson being All the, That was the only thing that was shown was a Woody Harrelson. You know, maybe he went a little overboard, but the guy was bigger than him. And, I know. What and happens is, is that... They kept him repeating. Okay. The, the, <laughs> that was the problem. I think my father said never... He was told... Uh, he said, you can beat the hell out of a person, but don't kick him. That's oh, what, what was the kicking part? That's where he's hitting him and kicking him. No, but him. why did they say don't kick him? Because it... Okay. The, okay. Generally... You know, nightsticks and things are used to subdue, but when you kick a person, it breaks ribs and things, and you can, you know, bust a person's body all up, kicking them. So don't kick them. You beat them. They said, okay, officers are taught. I mean, my father used to sit with his nightstick and bounce it up and down off the cement and catch it, and he would just do that. Oh, you know what another scene I thought was interesting was when Woody is with um, one of the gentlemen, and he gives him a confession. Yeah. And the guy, ba he says, go ahead, arrest me. The guy basically says, no, that's not the confession I want. Yeah. And he leaves him. Yeah. That's, that if you wanted him in jail, you would have taken a confession. They just want him to... But what was, he put it, let's make a deal. The deal was, was that he just gets, he gets stuck wrapped on a wrist and comes back as a police officer. Mm -hmm. Not he, There's nothing about him leaving it, just, just make a deal. Mm -hmm. Because he knows that they're not going to convict him for getting rid of the bad guys. So they want him gone, and he, there was no, nothing about him resigning. Nothing. He never had any intention to resign. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to get this gone and then go back to doing life as was. Go back to cleaning the streets. I was surprised that some of the actors and act, um, well, actually actresses that appeared in this movie, because of course you saw Steve Buscemi, but some other surprises was Sigourney Weaver, uh, Anne Hesh, Robin Penwright. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen her. Um, yeah, um, we had little Brie Larson mm -hmm. pushing it up a front star. Cynthia Nixon. Cynthia Nixon, and it's um, like I said, this is a uh, one. And they're all. And we were talking about the fact that up there on the stage that th this is just a strange. It is an oddity in the fact this is a macho, adrenaline-filled movie. With a lot of women. With the, uh, oh, and it's basically it's all about the women. If you pay any attention, well, why did you do this? Because I have daughters. Well, they did call him Mr. Date Rape a yeah, few times. Yeah, because he killed them. He, he basically, he tended to take aggression out on guys that that hurt women, and at the same time, this is a huge womanizer. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just like uh, was it one of the people said, "You you just you just trying to take yourself off the street." Mm -hmm. Oh, really? That's what one of them said. That's what the, that's one in the movie. You're just trying to take yourself off the street. Doesn't that say something that you do? You know, oh, Woody Allen. Woody Harrelson's character knows he is not the cop, the, the bad cop is doing it because he feels just, you know, that what he is doing is not wrong. Woody Harrelson knew everything he was doing was wrong. You think so? Well, yeah, he told his kids he did everything. Yeah, he, he did everything. Oh, yeah. That, remember that one scene with his daughter when she basically calls him all these names? Yeah. Um, you're a sexist, a homophobic, a... What a non elected pop up target, an asshole, a bigot, a racist. I mean, it, this is his daughter. And, and that's like when he, when, I, when he said, he said, I'm not racist. I hate everybody. And I after, hate everyone. After she basically called him all those names and she went on, all he says is, How long did it take you to rehearse that? Yeah, I know. How long did it take you to rehearse that? <laughs> yeah. But, um, 
But they have another, they, okay, the problem is with this movie, I come from a family that have been in the business, I, I, I do understand doing things, you know, very loosely, but I never understand a director that's not in control. And what we've been looking at in this series is a lot of movies with directors that are not in control. Actually, you know what, you're every, right. Every movie we've seen so far is a director that is not in control of the movie, he's letting the actors experiment. No. You don't let the actors experiment because, as they did say in this movie, they lost the first full day of shooting, totally lost the first day of shooting on a low-budget production with a film permit in your back pocket to shoot in the Union Zone and because Woody Harrelson was experimenting with the character. And then he still didn't get the message until the producer, Foster, sort of, we're going to do it again. Mm. Yeah, and then he got the message, well, no. You know, they did talk about this being unusual because it is a movie about L.A. that's actually filmed in L.A. and yeah. not in Montreal. Because they were talking about generally what you do is you make a movie based upon cost considerations. And, and tax breaks. And tax breaks, so you go elsewhere. But uh, he said what they wanted was what, you okay, you couldn't get Tomies in another city unless you put it up. I think that was the first 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah okay, <laughs> no, but, uh, mostly, so okay, the, mostly... The, in the first 15 minutes was the only part that actually had to be shot in the city of Los Angeles. Nothing else had to be shot in the city of Los Angeles. You could have went to, uh, you could have went to Dallas, Texas and shot that type because it's in, they're in the Boreal, Boreals, which basically go to any city with a Latino base and you've got that, you know, prime ridden areas. But um, it was an anomaly, which means they actually must have got a break. I think what they did the production, but I can't get the tag on the budget, but if your budget is under X amount, you make deals and it doesn't cost you as much to work in the city. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's it just, but like I said, I, I've done things. Uh, okay, uh, I've done musicals, for instance, where the, they really don't have a choreographer, so what the dancers are sitting there, they're sitting there working the steps out, and then the director will look at it and say, okay. But I've also, like, it was a <laughs>